Hey Wolfpack, Angela Wolf here, and it is the day after July 4th, which means we'd all probably rather still be on vacation. At least those that got the last few days off because I've been hanging out with some of my family, doing some tubing, uh, hanging out at the pool, uh, fishing, you name it. <laughs> but I couldn't miss today because I need to finish my Delilah because I'm going to wear it this weekend. So I'm wearing a Delilah where you can see I've jazzed up the sleeves a little bit. This one I made was way too big for me, but I ended up liking it because it's so comfortable. It's like wearing a huge old sweater, <laughs> although it's not old. So welcome everyone. Say hi. Today we are in part three, the final phase of sewing the Delilah. So we need to sew the body, hem, and add the neckline. If you missed any of the other parts, you can go back and watch part one and two. And the, so far we have some beautiful slits for the sleeve, all right? So this is inside out at this point because I wanna give you some tips for this. But before we get rolling, say hi, say where you're from. I see lots of the Wolfpack rolling in here. Uh, first of all, Fashion Soy Club members, I sent an email about, well, it wasn't an email, it was an invitation for our class, our live class tomorrow. We are sewing skirts. We're designing custom skirts. You can make any kind you want, but skirts is the theme for july right now and uh so i have some ideas for you but that's our fashion sewing club is tomorrow at 2 p.m eastern so you should have gotten an email with a link to the live i've already added you to the class i figured you'd be too busy this weekend <laughs> all right and i would love to know in the chat because i read this later tonight did you do anything fun this weekend did you stay up for fireworks because i never seem to make it that long i don't even try because I want to get up early and I must be rubbing off on some of my nephews because my eight-year-old nephew said, I don't want to stay up for fireworks tonight. I'd like to be on my A game tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah, because we're going tubing, uh, but you got to love that. I love fireworks. I just wish uh, in Michigan, it doesn't get dark till like 10 o'clock. So it's super late. So, all right. It's great to see you all. Let's get sewing because I want to get sewing and back on the, back on the beach, I should say. All right, guys, let's get rolling over to the ironing board. And it's so great to see you all too, by the way. We've got the whole world here today, almost literally. Okay, take this down. So after I saw you last week, I did do a couple things without you. And this is what you need to do next. Oh, that's pretty bright. Let me bring you, let me just make that not quite so hot. Here you go. You can see the black thread, right? So what I did is I sewed together the side seams. Why did I do that? Because I wanna try the top on. That's really important because this top, it's tighter at the bottom because when you wear it, you kind of scrunch it up on one side. This is kind of how I wear it at the bottom. And then up here, it's a lot looser up through the chest area and the sleeves. So you wanna try it on because do you want it tighter at the bottom or do you want it shorter where you have to hem it shorter or do you want it tighter through the bust area? So I have sewn this and, and I actually used one inch seam allowances just because I knew that I cut a size that was bigger than what I wanted. And I just wanted to see do I need to take it in anywhere? You know what? It fit perfect. I really like it's a loose style. I can scrunch it up a little bit. So that's good. And all I did was baste the side seams together. So here is your side seam all the way from one end to the other. Try it on. Do the other side, I mean, and then try it on. After you have that finished, you should be good to go. Okay, so now I'll just leave that because I'll cut it off. Do you, do you see something on here that maybe I also did before I saw you? Okay, I'll give you a hint. When I fold this up, what happens? It's a really nice crease. Now, I didn't do the side seams yet, so I'll do that with you. Before I even sew this together, I press up my hem allowances. Why? Well, it makes it a lot easier to do that hem at the last minute. So when these pieces were laying flat, I pressed up the front, the back, and then the sleeve. And this is how I do it. Just give your a little steam, use your clapper, 
hold that in place. And I already did the whole front edge. I'll do the other side back. I typically press my seam allowances towards the back side. Now this isn't going to be my full seam allowance, but this will give me an idea where the hem is. So you'll go all the way around the base. And no, I've not sewn my side seams yet. It just gives me a guide. So if you take a look here, you'll see my sleeves. I've already done this. I hemmed these up about three quarters of an inch, pressed up the hem the same way. Press it, use a little steam and the tailor's clapper. By the way, one of you mentioned, I got a couple of emails that I think the website's working again. So if you tried to order something last week and it said it would not, your credit card wouldn't go through or it wouldn't ship to your address, uh, there was a glitch going on. And I think we have it resolved. Fingers crossed on that one. All right, there's my sleeve and then do your other sleeve. So our next step is to go to the serger. I'm going to use a four thread overlock and sew my side seams. I'm just gonna cut, I'll just pull this basting stitch off when I'm finished. So that's pretty much going to be my seam right there. So let's go to the serger. And yes, I'm using the new Brother Airflow 3000, the easiest serger ever to thread. I'm not kidding, it's so simple. And I just had a few people that are taking the class. If, you've, if you have the serger, and full disclosure, I'm a Brother Brand Ambassador, but if you have the serger, it, once you register your machine, you'll get access to a free class that we did. It's on my Angela Wolf Academy. And it's 14 weeks, 13 or 14, I can't remember now, of hanging out with Kathy Gandy, Kathy Stipe, and myself, where we teach you how to use the serger and we have projects each week. So you don't want to miss that. And I just had a couple people email saying they're having so much fun in the class. So thanks for that. So I had a little extra room on my top. I'm just cutting off my basting. Now, if your top fit just perfect and you don't want to take it in any extra, make sure that you actually use your regular seam allowance. The pattern uh, originally is a half inch seam allowance. So I've, I actually basted in almost an inch and I'm cutting a little more off. And that's because I cut a size that was bigger than myself. Sometimes I'll do that on some of my tops if it's a loose top because I don't want it to be too tight. You can always take it in. All right. Side number two. There we go. That's a four thread overlock, so it stretches. All right, that looks great. See it? And now let's do the other side. Um, why am I using a four thread overlock? Because it's a little stronger than the three thread. And the upper part of this top isn't going to have a lot of tightness and movement, but the bottom half will. All right. All the way down to the other end and trim that off. Again, it will stretch. And that four thread just has a little bit more stability. So if this top is tight, it won't pull the seam out. All right, we only have two things left, the neckline and we need to hem. I've already pressed this. So let's just go to the cover stitch and hem this thing. And we'll do the neckline last. All right. Yes, this is a different machine than the, than the um, serger. Okay. I'll try to keep my head out of the way here so you can see. So this is different. This is not a serger. This is a cover stitch. So this is the Brother Cover Stitch CV3550. 
And if you watched last week, you know why that piece of thread, that piece of fabric is here. Just makes it easier to start and stop. But for this, I'm hemming in the round. So I have to start and stop a little bit different than we did last time. So lift up your needles into the upper position. I'm just gonna pull that out of the way. And of course I left my scissors over here. So hold on one sec. If you watched Soy Machines Plus last week, you know I have a pile of these scissors, but I put them all on the same table for the show. So we'll just trim that off. Okay, hopefully I didn't cut one of those too short or I'll be re-threading. Let's hope we didn't do that. All right, now when you're doing the cover stitch, remember your eye has to focus over here. You just wanna make sure that this folded edge stays in the same place. Don't move this all over the place. Your hem's gonna look really funny. I can feel that fabric, the double fold. I'm starting at the side seam because that's a good spot to hide those stitches. We'll go all the way around. <laughs> I was laughing. Some of you said, what is your adventure of the week? Well, it's every Monday, you know, and I'm trying to think, was there any adventures this week? Besides tubing, that was an adventure of its own. Nobody fell off of a boat on purpose. Um, hmm, maybe I bypassed this week. All right, we're getting back to where we started. So if you look closely, there are two threads up here on the top. I'm just gonna trim those off. And there's one thread on the bottom. That's where we started, right? So we're gonna stitch over where we started. Try to get as close to those stitch lines so they just are on top of each other. Now I'm kind of leaning over, so who knows if I'm exact, but I'm at the side seam, so nobody's gonna notice. Turn your hand wheel towards you to put your needles in the up position. Lift up your presser foot. I'll just use a pencil. See what I'm doing is I'm pulling out the upper threads like this and pulling my fabric. I just find that easier and I wanna take out enough that I don't have to worry about having to re-thread. All right, so here's my two upper threads. Trim those, leaving about an inch or so down here, leaving a long tail there. After you do that, just give this a little tug and everything is to the back side. I'll give you a closer view of this once we go to the ironing board. But now we have two sleeves to hem. Right now, this is what my hem looks like. It'll stretch when I put it on, which is really important because this top is a little tighter at the bottom. Now again, I made this one just a little bit looser because I wanted just a loose, comfy yellow top to wear with some short jean shorts for on the boat. Short shorts? <laughs> yeah, short shorts. All right, so it looks like my pressed hem is a little off on this side here. I better fix that before I run it through the cover stitch. Why? Well, you'll see. Oh, thanks, Diana. Fishing adventures are super fun. We did fish one day. We caught some walleye. Actually, no, we tried to catch walleye on the river, but we caught everything except walleye. Okay, do you see what I'm talking about here? I had pressed this up when it was flat, so now it's just a little bit skewed. I wanna make sure that this is pressed even across that side seam. If it's not, what'll happen is you'll run this through the machine and you can end up with a little ripple right here. So I'll trim that to make sure that's even. This side looks good. Now let's check the other side. It's the underarm seam that might be a little off. Let's see how this side is. It's pretty close, but it needs to have just a little bit more of a crisp crease line, which I'm doing with the clapper and some steam. So there's the underarm seam. 
that we just sewed together. There we go. See how nice this just rolls up then? So when I go to the machine, I just flip this up, run it through the machine. You're doing the cover stitch from the right side of the fabric. If this was not even underneath, what can happen is you can end up with a little roll like this on your hem. Have you ever done that? Because if you have, now you know what I'm talking about. All right, back to the cover stitch, if I can remember which machine it is. <laughs> Thanks, Diana. Clovis, do I like all the fish that I catch? Hmm. No. My favorite is salmon. I absolutely love salmon, which when I was younger, I hated salmon. Just the smell of it made me want to gag. <laughs> but I love eating it now. I don't know why. Um, I like walleye. I like perch. I like bluegill. I like steelhead. That's, well, I guess I do like almost all of it then. I'm not a really big fan of lake trout though. Okay, ready? And then when we fish in Florida, I like all the fish we catch. Or at least if we catch what we're trying to catch. All right, going all the way around. I started at the underarm seam. Here's the slit. That's why we had that closed area because you're gonna need to hem this. Go all the way around. I'm going to trim this now a little bit sooner just so you can see it. There's the two upper threads and the bottom thread. I'm trimming this because this is where you started, not where you ended. Go back over where you started by about an inch. Put your needles in the up position. Lift this up and let's go ahead and pull this out. By the way, if you're totally new to sewing knits and you want to learn how to sew knit tops, I have a class on my Angela Wolf Academy that you might like. Okay, so trim the two upper threads. That's the two upper, not the bottom ones, the upper. Pull it, it's all gone. It's like voila. And then I have some threads to the back, which I'll show you in a minute. So there's that. Now let's do the other sleeve. We're almost done with the Delilah. You can see this one is the, the one with cups. Isn't that cute? Okay. And let's do this one. Starting at the underarm. I'm going to get a little close to the underarm. I don't want... The reason I start... You started an inconspicuous... In say that fast three times. Seam. Because when you go back over that area... If it's off just a little bit, you don't want it to stand out. Oh, you sewed crooked. Okay, cut off your top thread and your bottom. This is where you started. And the bottom, just get it out of the way. That's my preference. Now go. And now I'm stitching back over where I started by an inch. Needles in the up position. Turn the hand wheel towards you. Let's get this out of here. You don't have to use a pencil. You could use something else. I just like to loosen these upper threads. See how much faster it comes out? I don't have to worry about bending the needles at all. Pencil not included, right? Okay, I'm cutting the two upper threads. Here, a little tug to the back, and there we go. I'll leave just a little bit there. All right, our hems are finished. Now let's go back to the ironing board and let's finish the neckline, and I'll show you the hem. Any questions on the hemming before I go there? Just out of curiosity. While I'm scanning all of your comments, any questions? So now I have the sides finished. I have a lot of threads I need to cut. The hems are all finished and we have the neckline, that's it. Now on the back side, after you pulled the cover stitch hem to the back, you can either tie those threads. Sometimes I'll tie them in a quick knot. Sometimes I just cut them. It's totally up to you. 
Um, I don't weave them back in and out. No, I don't, in case you're wondering. Uh, Janet, is that yellow fabric still available? Yes, it is. It's on the Angelo of Patterns app. So you have to go on your phone, Angelo of Patterns app or the comments sold website. And if it says zero inventory, I'll update it because I have about a half a roll left. Oh, good taste, Angie. <laughs> Oh, good, Diana. I'm glad that uh, uh, surging on my brother helps you. You guys are sure. Well, Perch is one of my favorite, by the way, Janelle. I love Perch. <laughs> what size boat did I start with? Well, I didn't start with any boat. I voted with my, my dad and mom and my grandparents when I was super young. It, I don't even know how big that boat was. Maybe like 15 foot. Then I met Wynn. And so since Wynn has lived on the water his whole life. I think he might be a fish in another life. <laughs> so we have a couple pontoon boats and then they go all the way up to size 36 foot, 36 foot. Uh-oh, Marcia, good luck on that CT scan. Yeah, so Diana, if you uh, send me a private message, I can send you some information on the class. Or if you go to AngelaWolf.com and click on Academy, you'll see it in there. It's called the Knits Masterclass. It teaches sewing with knits with a sewing machine and a serger. So both. I think there's, oh gosh, over 20 lessons. Oh, thanks, Helen. <laughs> it does take patience. <laughs> totally. Oh, I'm with you, Amanda. I, I love saltwater fish too. Oh, here we go. Do you often need to replace garments due to maybe fish hitting the garment? No, but I have had to replace garments from blood not coming out of the garment because I didn't put hydrogen peroxide fast enough from the fish blood. So kind of, yeah, kind of, yeah. Or I should rephrase that. Nice tops turned into fishing tops. That's more like it. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Patty, don't be mistaken by my cute top. I literally changed from my tank top, my bathing suit, to put this on to join you for the live show. It's hotter than blazes here. <laughs> In fact, I think I'm sweating with the air conditioning on, but I like what you're thinking. No, it's like 100 degrees outside. It's crazy hot. <laughs> it's crazy hot. Oh, Barbara, you would love a cover stitch machine. Do you have a serger? Because serger's first, that's the best. And then... Um, you need a cover stitch for hemming. It also does a chain stitch. It does some other things too. Oh, thanks. I love this yellow. It's going to look good on my fishing trip next week. All right. So let me go back over here and let's finish the neckline. We're doing pretty good. 22, 23 minutes. We've got it hemmed to the side sewn. Oh, Lorraine, that sounds like a little bit of a test. Well, my older cover stitch, I had to do the same thing. Uh, Claudia, it, the, the new serger class is only for the new Brother Airflow 3000. Yeah. So that's, a, that's for the brand new machine. And you just have to register your machine. Just, just like the Luminaire, same thing. All right, so there's my beautiful hem. If you want, you can tie these threads to the back. I don't usually. I just cut them. I've never had a problem with them coming out, but if you're worried, go ahead and do that. There's some of my basting stitch. Look at how beautiful that slit looks. Voila. All right, so now we need to finish the neckline. So the first thing I wanna do is with the Delilah, and I really didn't make any changes, but I did cut the top a little bit bigger, and I was sewing over a camera, so you can kind of see, this isn't quite even right here, right here. You want this side to be a nice curve. If it's more of a, po a point, like a boat neck, your collar is not going to look right. So you can either use a rotary cutter or scissors and even these out a little bit. And I also like to mark my front and back. So let's get started this way. There's 
my side seam all lined up. I'll just drop a pin on the edge just so I can finagle the fabric a little bit. Looks like that center. All right. So there's my shoulder. This is my center front. And that's my center back. And I can see where I need to get rid of just a little bit on this center back. I'm just gonna trim away a little bit on the whole thing to make a nice curve. First of all though, there's my center front. Give yourself just a little snip there. It's easier to align your neckline if you do that. And now I'm just gonna cut a little bit more of a curve here. Don't worry, I'm not cutting through the pin. That was just to line up for the center front, center back. See how I'm just curving around the front? Now I have a little bit nicer curve right here. I could even add a little more here if I want to. Let's see what it looks like now. No, oh, that looks fine. So I have a snip at the center back and a snip at the center front. And the curve looks really nice. All right, so here's my binding. Remember I cut this using the Angela Wolf strips. Some of you asked where those are located. If you can't find them, shoot me an email. They're on the website, but they're not on the app because it's a weird package to ship. I know, complicated. All right, there's that. And making sure I have wrong sides together here. And this is just one long strip. I haven't even measured this yet. And I'm doing this the same way that I always do it, just to show somebody who says, hey, you know what, I want to add a binding to a neckline and I don't have a pattern piece for it. You don't need one. Just measure your neckline or cut a strip like I do. This is uh, two inches wide. So once I sew this in, it'll be a half inch binding. Now let's go to the front so I can get a general idea of how much I need. Here's the front. If you can mold your fabric so it looks like a straight line, even though it's a curve, right? So there's my neckline. There's the front, there's the back. Fold this in half. Depending on your fabric, how much should you leave? The binding is usually smaller than the neckline. If you're using really thin fabric, it could even be two inches. So I usually start by cutting this the exact measurements because what happens? Well, if I cut it the exact measurement, by the time I sew the center back, once this is sewn, this is going to be a half, this is gonna be almost a whole inch shorter than the binding. But what I like to do now, I'm just gonna mark my center front so I can keep it as a guide. That's the center back. I'm gonna pin this in place. Okay, center front to center front. You can use fabric clips too, but this is my personal preference. Now, as I go around the center front area here, I stretch the binding just a little bit. And this is where if you're totally new at sewing knits that that class would come in handy. Stretch just a little. So the binding is a little bit less than the top. I do that twice for the front. Now, for those of you that have followed me for a long time, where do I not stretch? I do not stretch at the shoulder. That's one to one. The binding is the same length as the fabric on the shirt. Don't stretch that. Have you ever had a bunch of wrinkles at your shoulder? Well, that's why. Okay, let's get to the back. So from about two inches from the center, from the shoulder seam to the back to about three inches to the front. This part is not stretched. So there's my shoulder seam. This is one to one. Now let's go back around to the front and do this to the other side. Stretch just a little bit to the front. I usually go in about two inch increments, if that helps you. Stretch a little more for the front. 
and I'm going to compare both sides. So this is the center front. Can you see that little hole there? Hole there. So the fabric on the shirt is a little bit more than the binding. Now we're at the shoulder seam. This is where it's going to be one to one. So just walk your knit to the shoulder seam. Don't stretch it. And then to the back, about two inches, walk the knit. And now let's double check how much fabric we have left on the binding versus the top. All right, there's my mark. There's my center back right here. If I were to, to surge this together now, it would still be a little too loose because I, if I surge this now, it's going to be one to one, meaning the binding is the same length as the neckline. I don't want that. I want this to be a little tighter. So let's go ahead and pin this just a little bit tighter. And now this should show you why this is, I never measure and cut. I just start pinning and then wait to see what I have. Because if the fabric was a little lightweight, more lightweight than this, I might even need to take this in more. Okay, so now look, let's see what we have. There's the shirt, here's the binding. And now I have to stretch the binding to match the shirt. So this looks like this is going to be perfect for the binding. Let's go ahead and surge that and then we can attach the binding. And I'll take your questions because I know sometimes during a live it's a little tricky to see all the details here. All right, to the serger. Again, I'm using four thread overlock. If any of you have this machine or some or are thinking about getting it, I showed how to thread this. So easy. All right, so I'm lining up my pin with the knife. Take the pin out. <laughs> In case you missed that memo, take the pin out. You don't want to surge over your pins. There you go. I know it's so quiet. All right, so there's my binding where I just hemmed that. If you have really thick fabric, you can turn one seam allowance that way and one seam allowance this way. It just makes a little less bulk or put them both the same way. It's totally up to you. Now this center seam that I'm showing you here needs to match up with the center back. Okay, so if I put those two different ways, is it gonna be bulky at the top? Not usually, not usually, but you know, you gotta check it out. And now you can see here that the shirt has more fabric than the binding. How much more? Well, I'm stretching it. It's just a little bit. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. You got to test it yourself on your fabric. So we're going to start at the center back. And I'll just start. I could cut out a little spot and start there, but I'm just going to start surging on. You'll watch. Just watch how I do this. And I'm going to cut off just a little bit of the seam allowance. So obviously I started here and chained onto the garment. So when I get back to the center back, I have to make sure I cut that off. So where am I looking now? Well, you have a few options. You can either look here where this is lined up. A lot of times right now I'm looking at this end because I want to make sure that my binding is the same width all the way around the shirt. So you're kind of looking a couple different places. If you're nervous, you can baste this on first. Just know your basting stitches are going to look really crooked. Wrinkly, I should say. Wrinkly. And because I have pins in each placement, wherever I have each pin, I will just surge right up to right before it because I know that we're getting close to the center front where I have to stretch the binding a little bit. There's my center front. I want to make sure that the binding, I stretch the binding so it matches the fabric. And now we're at the area where it's one to one.
I know. I love this yellow too. I'm thinking that this yellow with a trim like this or um, embroidery would look absolutely gorgeous. So I might have a few yellow tops by the time we're done. Okay, so look closely. Really close. Can you see how I surged here and it just kind of angled on? I know it's a weird angle for you. So let me move you over just a little bit. Can you see that a little better? I started here and surged on. So I need to cut off that first section that I started with because once I get to the center back, that needs to be gone. And there are many ways you can do this. This is just my favorite. So now I'm surging back over where I started. I could disengage my knife if I want to, which I just did. Right there's the button, by the way. This is, I love this. How convenient is that? Engaged, dis disengaged. All right, back up. And we'll trim that off. Let's see what we have. Look at how nice that looks. Around the shoulder edge, around the front. This is when I always hold my breath and hope I didn't surge over something. Have you ever done a neckline and all of a sudden you open this up and you've got this pucker because you accidentally went over the fabric? Well, you're not the only one. That looks wonderful. All right. So let's go back to the dress form and see what we got. Okay. The dress form has to get over a few little bumps here. Here we go. This turned out so cute. Here you go. I still have some threads to cut. But I finished the top for the weekend. I even hemmed it. Wowzer. <laughs> Okay, it might not show up really good on this dress form because the colors kind of match, but <laughs> all right, here we go. There's the slits in the side. I need to throw a sleeve on here so you can actually see it, but didn't these turn out cute? Oh my gosh, I love it. There's the back. It's a little looser. So it's, it's a little looser, but then tighter along the hips. I am very excited about this. I think this turned out absolutely adorable. Let's see, I'll put Shirley right there. <laughs> what do you think? Okay, I'll take your questions now before we end the show. <laughs> Oh, thanks. I love this one. I did this for a cover for brother for their new serger. So this is the Delilah with the cuff and I sewed, I free motion sewed trim. I bought this trim. I didn't even embroider it myself. Darlene, 50-50. Usually not. I just trim it, but you can. Okay. Someone wants a link to the knits class. I'll drop it in the comments for you to make it easy. So the website where you find the knits class is academy.angelawolf.com. And I think it's right here. Here you go. I just dropped it in the comments. Here you go. All right. Yeah, so it looks like Diana has a different brand serger than I have, but you will find that, yes, I'm sure that they have some on YouTube as well. Hey, Cindy, great to see you. <laughs> oh, that'd be fun. You guys are talking fishing, I love that. Yep, Amanda, you got it right. Serger first, then cover stitch. Oh, thanks, Trisha. The Luminaire class, yes, if, and it's still available as of June, <laughs> what's July now? 2023. If you register your brother XP3, you will receive a link to the class to get in for free.
like a butter <laughs> a butter color. I agree. <laughs> Everybody's over on I know. So yeah, a lot of people moved over to YouTube to watch live shows because it seems to be a little more reliable. So I try to bring up your comments from both. I <laughs> because we are live streaming on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. But it seems to be the majority of everyone's hanging out on the YouTube side. <laughs> All right, guys, any questions for me? Easy peasy. Yes, totally. Well, tomorrow? Uh, Cindy, I don't do that. It takes too much time. You can if you want to, but I don't do it. I mean, why if you don't have to? If I'm really worried, I'll tie them in a quick knot and cut them off. But there's a lot of instructors that show it that way. But I have never found a need to do that. The only time my hem ends up coming undone is if I don't pull those two threads to the back side. Then you're in trouble. Oh, Diana got a dress form. Congratulations. Okay, so if you missed the slit in the sleeve, how to do it, just go back. You can go back to my YouTube channel. There's part one, part two, and this is part three. Yeah. That's about it. All right, everyone, so Fashion Sewing Club tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern. Tomorrow at noon, for those of you that love getting the free design of the month on Brother's channel, Joanne is coming on to show her a free, show us a free project that she has on the blog and the free design of the month. That's always fun. So that's at noon tomorrow, Thursday, noon Eastern, and at 2 p.m. is Fashion Sewing Club. And I just already sent you an email to log in. If you didn't get it, check your junk. Check your junk. Uh, Bev, I did not. I'll I'll look that up for you. Uh, will brother be coming out with a serger and cover stitch combo? You know, Deborah, I have no idea, but I have to be honest. I prefer them to be separate because I can just quickly go from one to the other. I mean, like you just saw how quickly I would have had to stop, change the machine over, and I, so for me, I personally enjoy this. But I don't know. I haven't been told. <laughs> All right, everyone, nice to see you. Be sure to share your photos if you're making this and tag me at Angela Wolf. I've not been super so super social lately. I've been really busy with family, uh, which is a lot of fun. But uh, when I get back into fishing <laughs> next week, I have nothing else to do except hang out with you on the social side. So be sure to tag me in this. I would love to see it. I agree, Phyllis, I agree. And I have a surprise for you. So next week, I'm not sure if there'll be a live show or not. I'm actually fishing in a major tournament, like one of the biggest ones of the year. If I pre-record something or if I bring you live from the boat, one or the other, or it might just be a photo. It really depends. But the week after, I don't know if it's the week after or the week after, but you'll have to watch the schedule. It shows up on YouTube and Facebook. Kelly Presley is going to be joining me. She's the wonderful lady who planned that fabulous cruise for February. And I invited her on because you see all these different sewing cruises. How do they work? Uh, what do you need for that? All those things. I'm curious myself. But when she invited me to teach on this cruise, my first answer was, nope, <laughs> I'm not going on a cruise. I'm on the water all the time. And then when she explained how it would work, we're doing a charity project, uh, where we're stopping, what's going to happen. I think you're going to love to hear this. So if you've been thinking about joining us, you won't want to miss this show. And if you just want to hang out with your friends, we'll be there too. Oh, Lorraine, I forgot. SMP's having their auction tomorrow. You're going to be jumping. You, got, you need like three screens open. Yeah, if you guys missed that, Blaine announced that they're doing a big auction, getting rid of a lot of their inventory from last year or I don't know what they're getting rid of but it sounds pretty good thanks Alan we have three tournaments in a row uh two actually it's two now it used to be three so one is Tuesday Wednesday and the other is Saturday Sunday taking place in Ludington Michigan all right everyone have a wonderful day nice to see you I'm going to cut my threads on my top and I'll have something great to wear for the weekend hmm. I might even wear it this afternoon <laughs> All right, everyone, have a great day. Great to see you. Till next time, happy sewing.